going on guys jps back for another video and today we're going to be reacting to we tried hiking three days to britain's most remote pub the old forge in noidart now this is going to be a good one guys because there's two things i really love and that's the pub and going for hikes if you guys remember my trip this past summer to england i went to the peak district and i stopped in a small town went for a nice little hike up this hill and then got a pint after multiple pints actually um but that's just you know it's a fun thing to do and this is a an enticing video to me because i want to see how f remote this pub really is you know there are some very remote places throughout britain uh, i'm gonna assume this video is scotland just because things can get crazy remote the f when you get up north in scotland and uh we'll see if the journey to this pub is worth it i'm assuming it's going to be a long journey if it's three days of hiking they need a lot of pints after that. Anyways, guys, let's get right into this. Consider joining the Patreon. First link in description for my reactions to British shows and movies. Let's get right into this. On the west coast of the Scottish Highlands is a unique area known as the Noidart Peninsula. Noidart is special in that it's completely cut off from the UK road network and so cannot be accessed by vehicle, leading many to refer to this impenetrable land as Britain's last wilderness. On the far side of this wild landscape is the UK's most remote village, Inverie. And within Inverie, there is a pub. Unable to drive there, when weather permits, the vast majority of visitors to this area take an 11-kilometre journey by boat. But there is another way. Attempted by far fewer, you can try to get there on foot. A treacherous route through the mountains exists, a round trip of over 50 kilometres from the nearest point where the road ends, and vehicles can go no further. Fascinated by this, I called on some long-time hiking friends and all of us agreed we'd be willing to try arguably the world's longest and most dangerous walk to a pub. Experienced though we were, there was little that could have prepared us for just how extreme this adventure would be. Through an unforgiving land of high winds, rain and storms. 50 kilometers. All to get to a pub and back again. This would be a very long way for a pint. <laughs> Dude, there's no way they hike back. They had to take the boat back. That Those clips looked ridiculous. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm Harry Morgan, and this is Jog On. From London, we took an overnight train heading north to the Scottish city of Inverness, and from there, we hired a truck, loaded it with our hiking gear, and began to drive along ever-narrowing roads, taking in the glorious Scottish scenery. I, I just have to say, why are there so many places in Scotland that start with Inv? Inverary, Inverness, Inverary, Inver... Like, <laughs> everything's in. Uh, but th this is great. This is a great video so far. I'm really excited for this. Having reached the point where you can drive no further, we began to prepare for our walk, which would take the better part of three days to get back from. An expedition not to be taken lightly. The three people joining me for this grand adventure would be... Tom, a walking pole demon and working towards his mountain leader qualification, Tom's experience in harsh terrain would be invaluable. Chris, a six foot five map reading savant. I've known Chris since we were just nine years old and to me, he's a human compass. And finally, another Tom, previously training as a Marine, Tom has since joined the military police and spent much of his life exploring mountainous areas. This was a team perfectly designed for a pint in the wild. Chris scribbled the details of our planned route in case of an emergency, with an ankle support for precaution following a recent injury, as well as a jog on water bottle locked and loaded in my pack. This pub walk was now feeling very real. It is quarter past two on Friday afternoon. It's really starting to rain a little bit more now, but our journey towards the most remote pub in Britain begins now. Chris and both Toms had opted for a darker aesthetic while I'd gone for the orange raincoat. Begun the hike on the watch. Our walk began with a moment of confusion as one of the guys thought that they could already see our rough destination ahead. <laughs> Why have we packed so heavily? There's the pub. <laughs> I'll have a Foster's please. The smooth path soon twisted into a narrow rocky trail that skirted the edge of the loch. They'd better not get a Foster's as their first pint. You can do better than that, please. 
<laughs> Please. And led us through leafy green undergrowth before opening back up to an area of moss covered rocks. What a trip to the pub this is. Speaking of which, I hope I don't actually trip. We trudge our way onwards two kilometers in now. Making our way further along the bank of the loch, one couldn't not pause to admire <clears throat> the turquoise tint of the frigid water. Cautious clambering was beginning to warm us up. So we've decoated and now we're ready to go again. You look decoated. Soon the rocky path began to rise, requiring 180 meters of ascent, which quickly turned into a slow squelching trudge. <laughs> Whoop. I've forgotten what fun hiking up hills with a large rucksack on is. But soon we were up. Three point three kilometers done. No sooner had we descended than the way rose again as the wind began to strengthen, though it was nothing compared to what awaited us. <sighs> Slowly making our way downhill, and then thankfully we think the next path goes around the large mound rather than over it. Five kilometers in, Tom photographed an old house on the shoreline below us, and our route took on an ancient mythical aesthetic. Seaweed just below. You all right, Tom? All good. <laughs> you both answered at the same time. What an easy way to ask how you're doing. As Tom has just pointed out an amazing tree up the front. Another hill starts to open out in front of us, but then the path cuts up along here and over this ridge. Another bridge crossing before us. Chris Corton taking it on first. Finding someone's lost kit, there was plenty of time to think about what we were taking on. A glance at the watch told me it had been two hours and 18 minutes since leaving the car park. We are 8.25 kilometers in. Whew. A welcome view. Before us, the trail sloped down to the impressive Barrasdale Bay. Sign there saying, welcome to Barrasdale. Delighted to see what is a roughly cut track. That'll make this section of walking quite a bit easier. Stretching out just before us into the cloud line. You can see some snow-capped mountains up there. Yet again, Scotland showing us some beautiful scenery. Being the starting day and nearing our first night stop, we took a moment to skim stones before following the track into a potential location to camp. Delighted to find that there were available bunks at Barrasdale Bothy, we decided to keep our tents dry for the moment and make the most of the additional shelter. Maybe we should use the evening to write and then film a small drama. <laughs> After failing to befriend a red deer out the front, we checked the route for the next day, the biggest section of all, which would see us strike out for the pub and, if successful, then try to get as far back as we could before nightfall, heating a meal and- So they are walking back, wow. I have to say though, this, like, these, um, structures, little cabins, whatever they are, all around Britain where you can just pop in, stay for the night and then leave. That is so nice for hikers and stuff. And also the trails that they're walking through, they're very rugged. They're going right through uh, the mountains, the countryside, all the nature. And that's not easy. Like I, f I feel like a lot of that ground would be uneven. A lot of the footing would be a bit iffy and uh, suspect at times, um, but they're pushing through. So definitely want to hike some more in Britain. It's There's so many trails and it's just a really outdoorsy place. A lot of people forget that. And brewing tea, we were ready to settle down. Uh, I think it's going to be worse because there's a lot more climbing and it's going to be a lot more wet as well. The Scottish scenery, I've always said, it's some of the best in the world. Tomorrow we go to Britain's most remote pub. Waking for the start of day two, we packed our equipment and departed the Bothy, as Chris and one of the Toms explained that we'd almost immediately be climbing a very large hill. Here we go then, day two, trying to reach the most remote pub in Britain. Let's go. So the first ascent of today is all the ascent we did yesterday combined. We're going straight up there. But as we crossed fast flowing waters, it was clear that this day's weather was going to be different. Day two has begun quite windy. Quite windy would soon turn out to be an understatement. Kind of weather in terms of no rain, but it's very strong winds. Tom double checked the map and Chris looked shocked. Our 440 meter climb transformed into a metronomic stomp. Pausing to admire more cascading Scottish water. Hello, my friend. And a frog. That's two kilometers walk so far. As we paused for Chris to eat a carrot, the wind really began to show us just how exposed we were. I couldn't quite believe how strong it was getting. And then, oh man, it was gone. Ooh, that woke me up. <laughs> that was amazing. Holy moly. Following our human hairdryer experience, we continued <laughs> to ascend. A weary trudge on the second day. This is a heck of a route to get to a pub. Nearly an hour in, 
still on the side of this mountain, getting towards the top one step at a time. But we ain't quitting, we're going to that pub. With Chris ditching his bag up front, we sat for a moment to catch our breath. Quite a view, really. After what had easily been the hardest slog of the pub walk so far, we finally crested the ridge. Oh, look at the tarn down there. Tom, Tom and Chris joined me. And now some downhill. But almost immediately, we had a problem. Where the path was meant to cross a violent waterfall, it had in fact been washed away. And athletic though we were, Ooh. trying to jump it just seemed needlessly risky. So while Tom and Chris passed bags over, lower down, we found a narrow section to hop across. Well done, four kilometers done. We continue down. And finally, for the first time in hours, we saw another human. Following this refreshing conversation, we crossed a surprisingly rickety bridge. Blimey, it's nice to pass a fellow hiker. He told us it took him about two hours and 14 minutes to get to this point from Inverary. Tom gave us a quick lesson in edible moss. Dang, that hiker is a beast. I'm sure if you pass people on a remote hike like this, you have to have a conversation. I mean, usually if on a more crowded trail, even then you'll still say hi or something like that. But out here, you'll cling on to any interaction you can get. And I fell over. Just took a tumble. I'm the third one of the group to do it. Wasn't filming or anything. There you go, as an example. Took most of it on my arm. 6.2 kilometers in, the ground is finally starting to level out a little bit as we get closer to the tarn down here. The water's edge would lead us another few kilometers to a dark scree covered track. First bit of golden sunlight just starting to come out. I'm enjoying this track a lot more. A bit more even under the foot. 10k in just under three hours. Checking our location, we knew that the pub was getting close now, and one could almost smell the pint in the air. But that air soon became turbulent as I was drowned out and Tom fought to close a gate. <laughs> Inverie is now very close. Thank you, Thank you Oh. Oh. Finding a welcome sign to the village, a mild excitement was brewing within the group. Following the road now into Inverary, 13.7 kilometers on the watch. Some people can be surprised to see vehicles in the village, but this is only because they have their own roads through Inverary. No roads actually connect to it. There was not a person in sight. Inverary looking beautiful, but windswept. Inverary felt deathly quiet. And there it was, the old forge, Britain's most remote mainland pub. We made it. Is that the climax? <laughs> That's the big moment. But as Chris reached out to open the door, I had concerns about it being open. Multiple previous attempts to get here for a pint had resulted in catastrophic failure as disheartened, weary adventurers had found the pub closed upon arrival. But not this time. A glorious warm room and a friendly barman awaited us. We ordered a pint, fish and chips, and sat in a moment of peace, delighted to have got there. But for me, to make it a successful, proper pub walk, we needed to get back. What we didn't know in that blissful moment is that the return journey was about to be far, far worse because the weather was about to turn. Leaving in for you, Dude, the best. No, that's what I'm saying. Like, you guys did not have to do that, bro. This was already a hard enough hike one way. Just take the, uh, whatever, 12 kilometer boat ride back or whatever it was like please oh but imagine how nice it would be to sit in that pub after the one-way journey there now let's see how they got back oh no was about to turn leaving Inverie in not the best weather after hearing the news that all ferries to Inverie had been cancelled that day due to the conditions we knew we needed to get going and fast. Hooded and determined, we quickly covered the first few kilometers. That's a hell of a house. I found an antler and we engaged in a spot of climbing. Coming up through the woodland now, taking out the paws in Inverie, we're four hours and 31 minutes in. The ground was quickly becoming saturated and I glanced up at the clouds, which were looking ever more ominous by the hour. We then saw some runners and I mildly wished that I too was able to move with such haste to get us back to the safety of the bothy. And then the weather went up another level. Now that's the kind of level where you have to really brace yourself to not get pushed off the path. A lull in the brewing storm allowed me a moment to secure my bag. Clambering our way back up. This is a proper a pub walk. What a sight. Spray blowing off the top and this is the path with no more bridge. We gotta get back across. Oh wow. All this for a pint and some fish and chips. This is proper job conditions now. Streams starting to form on the path. Feels like these Scottish mountains are trying to tell us something. Just a reminder, we don't do these things lightly. So if you are tempted to ever do an adventure like this, do the planning. Make sure that safety is the priority. At this point, with rain lashing down and wind whipping up faster and faster around us, I look back down to see that we only had one Tom with us. Chris is going back down. To look for Tom. He hasn't appeared from around the corner. He was there, but now he's not. Not the time to be hanging out 
on the side of a mountain, though. And then, just as concern was growing... OK, we need to find him. ..Tom appeared. Oh, he's there, I see him! Robert, he's appeared! He took absolutely ages. You probably can't see this too well. But the light's just coming up over the tarn here. Referred to as Britain's last wilderness. This place truly is quite spectacular. What was a path before? Now got streams running down it. Woo! Wind battered and rain soaked, Tom climbed towards me as I pondered on this walk. I think next time I might just take a stroll down the high street at <laughs> that point to go in the pub again. I'm sorry guys, I'm honestly in shock at how extreme this hike really is like oh my they are really out there and the thing about being out here i was told this as well when i went for the hike in the peak district i know i keep referencing that but it's very applicable for this video and it's like the weather can change on you very quickly so it's very important to be prepared i didn't do it really i checked the weather forecast but aside from that i was not prepared i didn't have any gear or anything with me but i was fine but like for a longer hike I would definitely be much more prepared because this video just shows you you can get caught under some dangerous uh, conditions. This is intense. Chris looked taken aback by the conditions we were experiencing. What happened next was mental. The wind became so strong it actually blew me over. I began recording from the ground. In what felt like a Scottish hurricane, I slowly made my way to where Chris was, also down on the ground. Hello, Chris. Looking back, we could see the first of the two Toms surmount the ridge, only to be blown so hard he couldn't stop and marched right past us. Coming back from the pub that's more crazy, apparently. No doubt about it, this is some of the strongest wind that's ever been in. And then, thankfully, missing Tom also emerged, his large rucksack getting caught in the powerful <laughs> gusts. Hey, jog on, mate. Finally, down the other side, it began to calm as I broke into a jog. Blue skies up above, spirits are high. Well, the light's starting to fade, as you'll be able to see, but we are back in the Barrasdale area. We now head towards the Bothy and hope that we can get back on a bunk bed. It may be full in there, but it'd be quite nice to get some extra shelter. We had the tents ready, but if there were Bothy bunks available... Here we go, moment of truth. Dude, I would be so nervous opening that door. Oh, I would want a, a bed so badly after all this. Hello. Oh. Success. Kicking off drenched boots, we were just really glad to be back in the warm. End of day two. Waking the next morning in the peaceful atmosphere of the Bothy, I brewed tea and began to get ready. Chris whistled a merry tune, pulling on his slightly damp socks. The start of day three, packing up in the Bothy, and then we head off back to that car park. The final day to complete the world's longest pub walk was underway, and our band of four were in good spirits. We made great progress through the Scottish scenery. Overcoming down the mountain. Yeah. And I treated myself to a brief run. Wind's taking me again, the wind's taking me. Bright clouds above made for easier hiking. It just drops away to the water. Treated myself to a run. You'll hear very few people saying that, but that's a that's a very runner thing to say. A, a run is quite the treat when you've been walking for a while. It's just, it's so nice to just speed up and get out of there quicker. In front of us, the loch is looking blue. The mountains are looking fearsome. The path soon narrowed to a bit over the width of a boot. Just a bit of a drop down to the left there. And I picked my way through the undergrowth. This is a heck of a walk. Look at this path, amazing. Evidence of the previous day's crazy weather, a tree had been brought down across the mossy path. Blimey, that's how strong the winds were. Ripped that down. Plodding on with the occasional rest, we wound our way back up rugged, rocky slopes. Currently walking through beds of seaweed that have blown up over the evening. Up the craggy rocks. Not long to go now. 9.3 kilometers. Helping each other up, we cautiously moved along the edge of a drop to the loch below. And a final burst of fantastic green led us to the road. The car park approaches. Good to be back on some solid ground. Seeing the truck emerge in the distance gave a simultaneous sense of relief and triumph. Ooh. Boom. Boom. Well, we did it, a three-day round trip to Britain's most remote pub in Inverie, the Old Forge. What a fantastic trip that was. That's some insane Strava right there. ...scenery yet again in the Scottish Highlands. If you do ever think about doing this trip, do your research, stay safe, and enjoy it. I'm Harry Morgan. Go for that hike. And this is Jogon.
All right, guys, jog on. Big shout out to this channel and this video as well from Harry Morgan. I, I was blown away by this video, honestly. It's very impressive. The balls on these lads, whew, crazy. Like to go for a hike like that, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta be willing to go through some things. And I'm sure they're, they all had such good attitudes though. Like you're literally getting blown over on your way back and your, your ass is in the ground, the wet mud, and you're laughing. Like, you see what I'm saying? There's very few people who would be able to uh, go on a, an expedition like this. And I think these guys were perfect for the job. So it was a great video. I think one thing I would say, I wish they like emphasized the climax of getting to the pub more. Maybe I was just wishing they would get pissed at the pub, but they had to walk back. That's what I'm saying. You need to have that return route ready. But like he said, all the ferries that day that they had got to the remote pub were canceled. So they had to walk it back from the old forge. Anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. If you did, hit that like button, hit subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.